I saw Trevor throw a brick through his lounge window. Mr. Shanoas was treated by his doctor for a cut he received, but was later able to identify Trevor when he was apprehended and arrested by the police. Trevor was charged at Ratton Street Police Station at 9.45pm and asked if he had anything to say, he made no reply. Do you have any questions? The great thing about theatre work is probably that you can, you know, adjust your character and the way that you act from, you know, day to yeah. day. With the movie, at some point, it's just finished, and then yeah. you, you can't really go back. Is that something that you? Th this is this is true. I mean, in in um, in the movie world, uh, when I'm done with my job, uh, somebody else takes it and and play God, and they start editing me, right? When in theatre, when the director leaves us. We're the gods. We edit. We decide. And then if you're a smart director, you come back in 14 days and figure out what, what's going on here. Guys, come on. <laughs> but that's true. So, so it's, a, it's a different process. I mean, it's the same work, but, but we, a, a theater play will, will change through a period. It will die out, and then we'll have a peak, and we'll come up with something else. Uh, so it's a different journey, definitely. Do you enjoy it more, jumping back and forth between series, movies, and theaters? Is that something I, I, I that... I haven't done theater for... I can't remember. Maybe twenty years. And are you so I enjoy not doing that. Okay, you, <laughs> you enjoy not doing it. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I kind of loved the theater. It is magical when it happens in the room, and there was these people. Nobody will ever feel that. Next day might be completely different. I, I did love it, but it's also a brutal thing if you're in a play that's not really working that well, and. The audience know that, and they are agreeing with you. It's not really working, and you have to do it 90 times. There's only this much you can you can make it better, right? So, so I was like, and also like you're waiting until it's eight o'clock in the evening. Your entire day is focused on that. So I, I just I think I'm more in love with the with filmmaking, and I think everyone in the audience is in love with you. Just to let you know, we're going to talk for about 30 minutes, and then you will have the chance to ask questions to Mats. Please do me one favor, uh, introduce yourself, ask only one question, and if you want to pitch a script, don't do it now. That's true. And, and one more rule, it has to be in Danish. Good luck. Guys. Yeah. And now we're coming to the second part of our interview. Yeah. Um, Mats, I know that you speak German, so we're going to do the rest of the line. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, Mats trinken, ja? <laughs> Sehr gut. Um, Mats, um, yesterday was the official... Worldwide James Bond Day. All right. All right. Well, why are you looking at me? I'm not James Bond. No. But you have been a part of I have this been. amazing franchise, and we can talk about what's happening in the future with the franchise. Uh, Le Chiffre is probably one of the smartest, um, hardest to deal with villains in the James Bond universe. Can you tell us a little bit about how you were approached and what that triggered? in you and w what you thought about when, when they offered you the part? First, I, I might not I might not put a label on him being the smartest man. When you lose $150 million dollars to a man who can't play poker, you're, you're not that smart, right? But uh, what went through my mind? I knew, I knew that Bond was big. I had never watched a Bond film at that point. Obviously, I lied uh, when I had the meeting with people. Uh, Wait, they they asked you if you, if you had no no they were going through all the films like and and I was just yeah that's oh, I love that yeah yeah and it was just like I just I was always waiting can we talk about the guys with the metal chief because I knew about him um, so that was the first kind of meeting and then they gave me a script and that was my very first script with my name on every page which is like this is how you do it today uh, so so if it's if you lose it it's yours. It's your script and you're to blame, right? I got it. I got on the plane. I started reading it. I fell asleep. I got out the plane and I forgot the script. And it was in there. And they wouldn't let me in again. They, it was like, come on, I'm just going to go in and get my stuff. No way. No way. So I was just lucky there because some cleaning person just threw it out and didn't look at it. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, thank God. Uh, so that so could, is this that the could first time that you've told this story? <laughs> Because no, I think I've said it before, but okay. just never see doubt. Or maybe I was not so articulate that day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that could have been the end of my career right there, at least in Hollywood. Uh, it was fantastic, but it 
it was enormous. I didn't realize how big it was until we had the premiere, and that was in, in London, in, in Leicester Square, and there was 50,000 people there. And we had to meet the Queen, or she had to meet us. Uh, and uh, so it, then it dawned on me, this is, this is something, this is big. But once you're doing it, you don't think like that. You can't run around with a fanboy hat on and, and go, oh, this is great. You've got to be in the room, and it's, it is your room. Yeah. Did you feel the pressure because it's such no. a beloved franchise that no because I because I haven't seen him and I mean it was a film have I, you I, seen any of the James Bond movies since I then? have seen them all now <laughs> okay let's talk about them I, I, I have I have watched a lot of them let's put it that way I've seen everything with Daniel Craig 